O oh, let me hear you speaking in accents clear and still, above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. O oh, speak to reassure me, to hasten or control. Lord, speak and make me listen, O oh, guardian of my soul. Welcome to this week's reflection on behalf of the Cottridge Church. Once again I've come down to the lakeside because today's narrative also takes place alongside the Sea of Galilee, so use your imaginations. Last week we heard the account of the feeding of the 5,000 and even when Jesus was facing a time of turmoil and bereavement, he was able to meet the needs of those who were following him. And from the act of generosity of one individual, Jesus was able to show a miracle that spoke of God's abundant love, God's grace. Today we're going to hear a gospel passage that speaks how even when we feel separated from Jesus in the turmoils and storms of life, God in Jesus Christ is with us. And that's the theme of the two Bible readings that I'm going to use this morning. Let us pray. Lord God, you speak to us in so many ways in your word and in our worship, in the bustle of our daily lives and in the silences. You speak to us in the ordinary and the extraordinary, in the expected and the unexpected, and always with love. Help us to listen for you so that we may respond to your call whenever and wherever it comes. Amen. This week I'm in the same place as last week, which is Upper Bittle Reservoir, which is filling in as the Sea of Galilee for purposes of our reflection this week. We live in a time that holds much more worries and concerns than normal, if there ever is such a thing as normal. Today we're going to hear two readings that speak of individuals passing through times of turmoil. We'll hear how Elijah, on the run from Queen Jezebel, after Elijah has put some of the prophets of the false god Baal to death, encounters God in the silence. And we'll also hear how Peter and the other disciples, who are physically separated from Jesus, encounter a time of turmoil and storm, but how a surprising encounter with Jesus brings peace in that context. In our first reading then, Elijah is on the run. He's on the run because Queen Jezebel has said she is going to put him to the sword in the same way that he put the prophets of Baal to the sword. He seeks refuge in a cave. 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 13. God said to Elijah, Go and stand out on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Elijah suddenly realises that he is not separated from God. He also realises that God isn't always encountered in a mighty, powerful force. Here, Elijah encounters God in the still, small voice, the sheer silence. Last week's Gospel was the feeding of the 5,000. At the beginning of that text, Jesus is seeking somewhere to be quiet, a place of solitude, where he can pray. He'd been rejected in his hometown of Nazareth and he'd recently heard about the 
death, the execution of his cousin John the Baptist. He doesn't find any peace and solitude on that occasion because the crowd are around and he shows compassion for those who need healing and he feeds the crowd who have gathered. At the end of that passage, Jesus does go off to seek solitude and it's the disciples turn to take to the water in a boat and set sail on the Sea of Galilee. Our second reading. Matthew 14 verses 22 to 33. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land and the wind was against them. Early in the morning, Jesus came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter climbed out of the boat and started walking on the water towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Incidentally, in terms of Jesus praying, this is one of only two occasions in Matthew's Gospel where Jesus is depicted as praying. The other is in the Garden of Gethsemane. So you can see the depths of turmoil that Jesus is in. On the face of it, this is an account of Jesus calming the wind and the storm. But we've already had an account along those lines in Matthew's Gospel. It occurs in chapter 8. So, something different is clearly Matthew's message here. Jesus has found his quiet place to pray alone, but because of that the disciples now feel separated from Jesus. They have taken the boat out on the lake and they've encountered a storm, waves and wind. They are terrified throughout the hours of darkness. But then, in the midst of their distress, and so unexpectedly, they encounter Jesus, who they see somehow moving towards them over the waters. At first, they think it's a ghost, an apparition. Then they realise that it's Jesus. Peter climbs out of the boat, bid by Jesus to walk across those waves and come to him. But Peter starts to sink. But just at that moment of crisis, Jesus reaches out his hand and pulls Peter out of the waves. And together they climb into the boat, that place of safety. On the waters you came. Ever present God, in Jesus you have given us sure hope. Yet when the waters are turbulent and the wind is against us, we become unsure. At times we are rendered sightless by our circumstances, unable to see you for who you are. So we mix you in as part of the turbulence. Yet when we fear the waters are just too much, it is on the waters that you come. Ever gracious God, when we reach out even in our disbelief, 
you are there to hold our hands. You encourage us to be brave, to step out on the waters. For you are there, ready to walk alongside. Though the waters may threaten to overwhelm us, and the winds consume us, and though sometimes we may doubt you, grant us courage to step out on the waters, with our thoughts fixed on you. For when we fear the waters are just too much, it is on the waters that you come. Amen. Jesus walking on the water and calming the storm, and Jesus feeding the 5,000 last week, aren't just accounts about miracles that took place 2,000 years ago. They also speak about our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Last week spoke of God's abundant grace that sparked by an act of generosity by a person who gave up their lunch to share. God was able to do momentous things. Today reminds us that even in turmoil, when we feel that we're perhaps like the disciples in that boat passing through a stormy time in our lives and we feel so separated from God. God is there, extending that hand to us and bidding us to come to him for rescue. Let us go out trusting in the love, faithfulness and power of Jesus. May we know his peace even in the midst of the storm and the blessing of God, Saviour, Lord and Friend, be upon us now and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's reflection on behalf of the Cottridge Church. You'll find a transcript of this morning's reflection on the resource site, the address of which is appearing on the screen now. As I said last week, if you enjoy these videos, please click the like symbol, the thumbs up symbol below the video, and subscribe to the channel so you know that we've uploaded a new video. For now, take care, stay safe, and remember that the best of all, God is with us.